But what if we want to measure an electric current greater than milliampere, greater than microampere, like ampere, 10 ampere, 20 ampere, 30 ampere, 100 ampere? So can you use that tiny coil for this? No. We should do something else to make it, that coil measure very really big electric current. So that device is called ammeter. Ammeter is a device which measures very big electric currents. Ammeter is the device which measures very big electric currents. 10 ampere, 20 ampere, 30 ampere, 40 ampere, 100 ampere. Ammeter. You should know this, this definition. So, device which measures big electric currents ammeter. is ammeter. Not my, not um, galvanometer, it's ammeter. So, but we can convert a galvanometer to an ammeter. Yeah, we can construct from a galvanometer and a meter, but we should do something. So to do that, to convert a galvanometer to a meter, we have to connect a low value resistor, low value resistor, in parallel with the coil. Inside the coil, remember? So there's a coil, so we have to connect this coil and that low value resistor in parallel. Name of that low value resistor is shunt. Shunt. So that low value resistor is named as shunt. That low value resistor must be connected in parallel to the coil. This is the coil representing our way here. This is the low value resistor called as shunt. They are connected in parallel. So what is connection in parallel mean? Briefly, that I will explain that. Also, those videos I recorded and then share with you. You can watch if you want in detailed information. So two resistors are in parallel. Two resistors are in parallel. If, so say that this is resistor one, this is resistor two, so they are in parallel. If you join each end of this resistor one to another, yeah, I mean, say that these ends are first ends or left ends, left end must be connected to each other, right ends must be connected to one another. So there are two joints for each two resistors, two joints. Then these two ends again connected to a battery. So this combination is known as parallel combination. Now, resistor one and resistor are in parallel. We need the same thing in here. This is galvanometric coil. A low value resistor called shan is connected in parallel because they have two joints. If there are two joints, so then it's a parallel connection. Two important, there are four basic characteristics of parallel com combined circuit, but I'm going to just explain two of them now for this title. Uh, one of them is electric current, because uh, this battery provides electric current. Electric current to the circuit. So electric current, you know, starts from positive terminal and goes to the negative terminal, the outside circuit. Now let's follow the path of the electric current. It lives from here, goes till here. Now there are two branches. From which branch electric current will go? From the bottom of that, not on a single branch. So a part of this electric current will go through the resistor one, and the resistor two, I will say it's I2. Other remaining part will pass through the resistor one, which I am going to say I1. So it's similar to water. Water, electric current is very similar to water. Assume that these are the pipes. Main pipe sends 10 liter current or water. If 6 liter passes through here, 4 liter passes from there. Correct? Yeah, the sum of the I1 and I2 must be equal to. Uh, this is the, one of the important pro, uh, characteristics of parallel connected circuits. Yeah, the sum of the electric currents on each branch, we say them branch. I1 plus I2 is equal to I. So let me write I is equal to. I1 plus I2. Second characteristic of the parallel connected circuit is this. Potential differences are equal. Potential difference across the resistor 1. Potential difference across the resistor 2. Potential difference across the battery. They are equal to each other. So V is the potential difference of the battery. Equals V1 potential difference across the R1, resistor 1 equal to potential difference across the resistor 2. 
So these two are important basic characteristics of Kalinov. There are two more, but not now. I will talk about this. All right. According to Ohm's law, can I write V1 and V1 and V2 in terms of INR? Yes, we can. Version. Remember? Version. V is equal to I times R. Let's write V1. What is V1? Potential difference across the resistor one. Okay? Electric current resistor one is R1. Resistance of resistor one is R1. So if I multiply my gap, I will get V1. Yeah, instead of V1 and what can I write? I1 times R1. Let's try it in here. Let's write I1 times R1. For V2, you can predict what we are going to write. So I2 times R2. Okay. If the two quantities are multiplied, are they inversely proportional or directly proportional? Inversely Inverse proportional. Remember, we studied in section 3, chapter 3, similar uh, equation. V is equal to lambda times F. So this is constant. Lambda and F are? Inversely proportional. Similarly, I and R, multiplication. I and R in parallel connected circuits are inversely proportional. What does it mean? Greater R means smaller electric current. Smaller R means greater electric current. Opposite. They're inversely proportional. Now tell me, shunt. Shunt is shunt is a low value resistor. Shunt is a low value resistor. If the resistor is low, electric current must be high. Yeah, the electric current passing through the shunt is very high compared to the electric current passing through the carbon meter. So now I'm going to apply these properties this to this uh, circuit. What circuit? Which is carbon meter and resistor connected. Shunt is connected in parallel. Okay. We are going to provide a very big electric current to the whole ammeter. Big electric current is R. So a part of this electric current passes through shunt. Other part of the electric current passes through carbon meter. So then what does it mean? Some of them, some of them must be equal to I. Yeah, yeah. I G plus I S is equal to I. First equation. And second one. Because they are parallel. Vg and Vs are equal, they are equal to each other. Tell me now, which resistor is greater? Rs or Rg? Which one? So our low value resistor, and Rs is smaller than Rg. Low value, this is low value resistor, it's called shunt. Okay, resistance and electric current are inversely proportional, correct? Just we love that. Resistance in parallel combination, resistance and electric current are inversely proportional. So because shunt has a very small resistance, electric current of the shunt must be very weak. Got it. I for shunt much greater than I for Calvin meter. That's why we are going to send a very big current to the ammeter, but most of this current passes through the Shun, very small part passes through the Galway meter. If a big current I is to be measured, most shun draws most of the main current. Draws means takes. We send, say, the 10 ampere current you send, shunt most probably takes 90%, 9 ampere of this taken by the shunt. So what is that for uh, Galway meter? One ampere. If 10 is sent, if 9 of them is taken by the shunt, one ampere remains for the color meter. So why do we why do we do that? The yes, shunt draws most of the main current I S. A very small current passes through the coil or the meter. Because you saw yesterday or previous lesson. Galvanometer meter is a very small coil, very thin, very thin coil. If you give big current to that coil, it will burn directly. So it will you damage this. It cannot be used anymore. That's why you should protect the coil from big current. How did we protect this? Yes, we send big current, correct? We send big current, but from this big turn, much of them pass through the sham. Very small part pass through the coil. We protected the coil. In fact, this shunt is a kind of protector. 
it protects the coil from big current by taking most of the main current through its side. Okay, so shunt draws most of the main current. I ask a very small current passes through the coil through the galvanometer. So according to the law of the currents, Ig plus Is must be equal to I. First, we will use this. Second, according to the law of potentials in parallel, what is that? Potential difference Vg and potential difference of Vs must be equal to each other. Vg and Vs must be equal to each other. What is Vg according to Ohm's law? Ver, Vr times R. So Vg is Ig times Rg. Vs is Is times R. So these two must be equal as well. Okay, now we will solve a problem. Any questions about this? Okay, this is the I like this problem. There are two chapter problems about them. One of them is about a meter. Now that we will finish this. And also this exam question, this one. So we want to use an ammeter of internal resistance 5 ohm. Hmm, internal resistance. Internal resistance is about the coil. When it says internal resistance, it is talking about coil. Because it belongs to, inside the valve, there's only coil initially. So that resistance belongs to the coil. Internal resistance is talking about the coil, a coil is the galvanometer. So this resistor is galvanometer's resistance. R sub G, galvanometer's resistance. How much? 5 ohm. Okay, you got it? Internal is just about the coil, nothing else. Coil's resistance is 5 ohm, galvanometer's resistance is 5 ohm. In order to measure electric currents up to 10 ampere, up to 10 ampere, so big current is this? Coil cannot measure this. So it is the electric current given to the voltmeter. Now it is I. How much is I? 10 ampere. So 10 ampere is the main current. Up to, keyword, up to. When it says up to this, it is capital I. Capital I, yeah, the main current of the ammeter. While from then on now, while a meter measures current between 0 and 1. How 0 and 1? So it's about a rotating thing. What is rotating? The coil. It's the coil's current. From 0 to 1. Yeah, this coil can draw maximum 1 ampere, not greater than 1. Can be less than that, yes? 0 0.9, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, yes, 0 to from zero till one ampere. This one ampere is the maximum current galvanometer can draw from the circuit. So it's going to be one. If I ask you, what is the electric current of the sun? No. It is nine. Why? Ten is coming. Ten is going this way. One goes through the galvanometer. One. And what about the rest? How much is the rest? Nine. Nine. Of course, nine must pass through the shunt. So, nine ampere current passes through the shunt. Total is nine plus one, must be ten. So, by this way, you can calculate, easily calculate how much electric current passes through the shunt. So, also, you can use this equation as well. This is the equation. How much is total current? Capital I? Ten. How much is IG? One. How much is IS? How much is I S? No, ten minus one is equal to nine. Mathematically, by equations you can do all just from your mind. Mm -hmm. So ten is coming. One passes through galvanometer. So the remaining nine must pass through the shunt. Nine ampere current passes through the shunt. It was what we expected because shunt is a very low resistance. Of course, its current must be very high. Shunt current is nine and nine times of the galvanometer's current. And calculate what is the resistance of the shunt. Rs is the question. 
that should be connected in parallel, you know, shunt is connected in parallel, with the ammeter. So still talking about the coil. In order to do this job. So in parallel connection, what is it called? Vs, potential difference across the shunt and potential difference across the galvanometer R equal, according to Ohm's law, E is equal to I times R. Then Vs is equal to Rs times Rs, which is equal to Ig times Rg. How much is R Is? Shunt's current, we just got it. Shunt current is 9 ampere. This is 9. So we just wrote it in here. 9. How much is RS? RS is the question. How much is the resistor of the shunt? This is the question. RS is the question. How much is the galvanometer's current? 1 ampere. We just got it here. It is IG is 1 ampere. How much is the RG, which is the resistance of the galvanometer? It is 5. Uh, this is 5. The rest is very good. Use your mouth. What else? 1 times 5, 5. So divide by 9, both sides. Divide by 9. Result is going to be 0.55. Yeah, 9 divided by 5. 5 divided by 9, which is going to be 0.55. Oh.